Good evening and welcome to DCU TV News. I'm Shauna Cohn and today we'll be looking at the top stories from across the university over the last two weeks. We will also be looking at national news stories that directly affect DCU students. Our first story this evening, Health Minister Simon Harris says he will offer every student nurse and midwife a full-time and permanent job once they graduate. Our reporters Ashley Nolan and Rachel Martin spoke to some of DCU's nursing students about the announcement. Annually, approximately 1,800 students start a nursing degree in Ireland. This month, Minister for Health, Simon Harris, has guaranteed permanent contracts will be available for all nursing and midwifery graduates. The move comes as part of the Health Service People Strategy, which aims to combat the issues with Ireland's revolving door health system. We spoke to student nurses in DCU, where reactions to the announcement were mixed. I think it'd be brilliant if it comes true, but we believe when we see it. Um, it's very easy to make those promises, but what's his guarantee, or how is how can he guarantee that? Yeah, it's really nice to know, like that when we qualify, we'll have something definitely there, you know, and not have to go to another country, you know, looking for looking for a job basically, and we have like a safety net here. And was emigration something you had considered before? Yeah, like, you know, you'd be kind of like thinking about it if like you weren't guaranteed something here. So it's nice not to have to now. Well, it's a great idea and I hope that does happen. But I know for uh, for current fourth years that they still haven't been issued with their contracts and they were told that they were due them and they're still waiting. A survey done by the Irish Nursing and Midwives Organisation last year showed that only 30% of nursing graduates were offered contracts by the HSE and only 16% of these were permanent. On top of this, 78% of graduates were considering emigration following their degree. Ashley Nolan, DCU TV News. Ireland is now the top producer of plastic waste in the European Union. With Ireland's waste and plastic levels increasing, DCU Sustainability Living is campaigning for a plastic-free campus. Helen O'Neill and Amy Murphy report. Ireland was number one in Europe for plastic waste in 2017, according to Eurostat figures. Each person produced 61 kilograms of waste per year. DCU have started a petition to eliminate the use and sale of single-use plastics on DCU campuses. This includes coffee cups, cutlery, bottles, straws and bags. Use two euro reusable cups on campus. Environmental lecturer in DCU, Kieran Fagan, said he is in favour of the reusable cups. We asked students if they think they are a good idea. Um, I think like people use them for a while and then kind of forget about them and kind of, I don't know. No, I think it's a really, really good idea. I think we really need to be more conscious of the environment in every little aspect of our daily lives because it all really adds up. And especially when there's so many people on campus, it really does add up big time. So I'd say if everybody gets on board with it and doesn't throw them all away every time they use them, it could really be a really good initiative. Yeah, definitely. I'd be up for that. I'd just be afraid that I'd forget it and then I'd have to like, buy a new reuse book up. But it's great. Definitely a good idea. I mean, with the amount of waste that we contribute, like everyday life anyway, there's nothing wrong with reusing a couple, a couple of times. Hal O'Neill, DCU. DCU was granted the status of University of Sanctuary in December 2016. The college has provided 15 scholarships for Irish-based refugees and asylum seekers since September. Michelle Townsend and Alex Dunn report. DCU welcomes students from over 110 countries, including Shepard Machea from Zimbabwe. But how he got to DCU is a tale more fraught than most. On the run from his home, Shepherd sought asylum in Ireland and is staying in a direct provision centre in Port Leash. I was under persecution um, from uh, the ruling party. I was being forced to partake of uh, the activities that they do in like uh, forcing people to join the party and forcing people to go and attack other people like uh, of the opposition parties and those that are not interested in joining the party. So I refused. If I'm not a polit politician myself and I'm not interested in politics. So the thing is like when I refused, I then became an enemy to them. And uh, they kept trying to force me and I kept refusing until I became a target and they started persecuting me and uh, they were beating me up and uh, they took me several times and they tortured me until one day I just like uh, got a chance to skip out of the country. That's how I ended up in Ireland. After studying in Port Leash College for a year, he applied through the CAO to go to university but didn't have the money. Luckily, 
the University of Sanctuary programme helped him out. I applied through the CAO and when I made my application, I actually put DCU on top. This is where I wanted to study. For some reason, I don't know, but I've just had some people like making very good recommendations about DCU. Then, um, well, I didn't have money to go to university. All of a sudden, like uh, we got a reception here. They put a link um, saying that DCU were offering scholarships. So I applied and um, thank God I was accepted. DCU took on 15 students through the programme, which has been a major success in its first year. We had a very successful colloquium at the start of September. We're running again our Mali project every week for two hours when we bring in um, people from Mosni. And we're doing a storytelling project with our DCU students. And there's all the few things going on like this and it's been really, uh, a really good energy. Shepard now plans to work in IT after graduation and his education is helping him to build a better life. I have learned a lot of things. I've been in school now say close to six months, five months, six months. But um, I've actually learned a lot of things, to be honest with you. And um, though I'm studying online, it's uh, a very, very uh, tough thing to do. It's very challenging. It comes with a lot of challenges. It comes with a lot of discipline, studying online. I'm studying on my own, spending a lot of time like reading. And um, to be honest, it has done a lot of good and made a lot of changes in my life in terms of like how far I can push myself. Michelle Townsend, DCU TV News. The independent radio sector has received a boost with Communications Minister Dennis Nocton making a number of significant changes. Zoe Ryan reports. The Minister for Communications, Dennis Nocton, recently proposed to relax radio advertising caps to allow radio stations to broadcast more than 10 minutes of advertising per hour. In light of this announcement, we spoke to professionals and experts in the industry, as well as radio listeners, to ask their opinion on the matter. I would have a lot of a lot of faith in the standard of radio in Ireland, standard of broadcasting. So I think you know the producers are going to be working hard to try and keep the balance between actually funding funding the shows and letting the presenters keep the, the flow of the actual show itself. Uh, that's going to be the, the big problem of trying to keep the balance between the two. So by increasing the time, yeah, it's going to impact the show, but there's going to be a lot of people working hard to try and keep the, the standard of the show the same. If people are keyed in and they're listening, then one or two extra minutes I don't know that that would make a big difference and of course I would expect the broadcasters then to compensate for that by offering more engaging content. But I know there's a fair number of people who at least for music radio think that there is already an overwhelming amount of radio um, advertising. It's tough to say, I mean obviously they would probably be unhappy with the news but whether or not the actual increase would have any particular effect on people's listening habits, I'm not sure. The Afternoon Show with Carl James on Midlands 103. It is Carl James here from the Afternoon Show in Midlands 103. Effective advertising makes people remember your name. Advertising around special events like GAA matches are key to both radio and the advertiser. There's a guaranteed audience and it's an easier sell for the station. Uh, increasing the time per hour on these occasions would both win new advertisers plus reduce the chance of offending key clients by refusal. Bring in the new flexibility rule and help prevent further breaches. Uh, remember the overall cap of 15% uh, between 7am and 7pm remains so everyone's a winner The Afternoon Show with Carl James on Midlands 103 So by increasing the, uh, the space of advertising times that means there's more income going into radio stations which means they can actually do more with the money they get for example Spin might be able to fuel the cars more to go out to more places or it could help them buy newer equipment let them do more things and in the end, 30 seconds longer of advertising might increase like how good the quality is of their shows. At the Radio Days conference in Dublin this week, the Minister confirmed that he is considering an offer from the IBA to change the 10-minute rule. Zoe Ryan, DCTV News. The government's latest action plan for education aims to boost learning of foreign languages. Anya Connolly and Megan Conway report on what this means for DCU. German, Spanish, French and Italian. 
These are just some of the foreign languages students will be encouraged to learn under the latest Education Action Plan launched by the government. The plan sets out an ambitious roadmap to put Ireland in the top 10 countries in Europe for the teaching of foreign languages by 2026. Speaking at the launch, Tito Leo Vradker said it was a shame that many people in Ireland can only master one language, a viewpoint that many students in DCU share. Yeah, well, I studied uh, French in the Leave in Cert and I didn't really uh, take to it that much, but I was in Germany last week and uh, I definitely think that language, a second language would be very beneficial because, you know, we're so isolated just speaking English, you know, a lot of people speak other languages that aren't English and um, when I was in Germany I really found it difficult at times. Uh, yeah, I do know another language. Well, I'm, I know conversational level of Spanish. Um, I used to live there, so obviously I know a good bit. Um, I do think it's important for people to even attempt to learn a little bit of another language. Um, so yeah, I think it is. I think it's something that everyone should look into learning at least once in their life. I kind of regret not taking up the language at university because I think if you ever want to work abroad, it's kind. Of, it's just really handy to have, and even. I don't know, you know when you go on holidays, I kind of feel really ignorant that you just know English and that's it, and no one knows any other language. So, especially with my course, I've, so I do, uh, I had the option to take a language and I didn't, and I, sometimes I regret it um, not doing it, because then it could have like, widened the scope for possible future careers and stuff like that. The announcement was welcomed by DCU's language school. But this is something that the language community in Ireland, the language professionals, researchers, teachers and so on, has been waiting for at least 30 years because there is no language strategy or language policy in Ireland. As Ireland and its economy build closer links with Europe, knowledge of foreign languages will be crucial. Companies need to have people who can engage with Europeans and beyond uh, if they really want to export, for instance, because this idea that the world speaks English so you don't need to speak their language, this is, uh, you know, it is a myth, really. The strategy for the teaching of foreign languages is set to change dramatically, with 20% of all higher education students learning a language as part of their course by 2026. Shauna Cohn, DCU TV News. The annual Cracking Up event organised by DCU's Mental Health Society was held in the city earlier this month. Our reporter Karen Gaffney went along to see what all the crack's about. I'm down in Whelan's on Wexford Street for the annual Cracking Up event in aid of the DCU Mental Health Society. I caught up with some of the committee members and fans to see what they had to say about the event. And um, this is the third Cracking Up. Cracking Up is a concert that's put on by the Mental Health Society here in DCU. It's held in Whelan's every year, so we've had acts like the Coronas, David Keenan, um, the Young Folk. Um, Owen Schneider and loads and loads more. It's been really, really successful the last couple of years. We're fundraising for Jigsaw. Jigsaw is a um, organisation that focuses on the youth's mental health. It's one that's very close to many hearts on the committee. And um, so we're really excited to be able to donate 100% of all proceeds that are raised to the charity tonight. Supporting the charity event were musicians Joel Erkins, Eve Bell, Flat Out, and poet and DCU alumni James O'Connor, along with Ushino Hanlon as MC. Bring up, bring up, bring up! Welcome to the stage, James O'Connor! Um, well, I was, I was part of the Mental Health Society years ago, and um, when it first started, I was on the first committee, and I became the first, um, the first uh, mentor manager for the hub. And I just think it's a really great cause, and I'd love, I love to come back every chance I get to to help the committee out and to helped with these big events. I was involved in the first cracking up, so I would, I would love to come back and see what it has evolved into. As I failed to pull myself together, arms wrapped around me and hold me tight. It's okay. I was performing this evening. Um, and yeah, no, I was really happy to get involved because Jigsaw do absolutely fantastic work. Like, they're really important. And like, um, focusing on youth mental health in Ireland is like, it, it should be a way bigger issue than, than it is. It should be, there should be a lot more uh, effort going into rectifying a lot of issues that we have and um, Jigsaw are doing amazing work towards that and uh, yeah so I was delighted to get involved and it's a very great cause to say. Yeah, no, loads of people coming, there's loads of brilliant acts that'll be playing and I'm just just all around excited for it. 
cakes are amazing so there. They're very good so there. Yeah, the atmosphere is so good. I'm having a great night. Um, it's going very, very well. Feeling very mentally sound and fantastic. Um, mental health sock in DCU is unreal and I feel like they deserve all the support in the world. So I wanted to come and support them because uh, they're all great people working for something very good. Because I turned six last week. <laughs> Gaffney at Cracking Up 2018 for DCU TV News. That's all for this week. Remember, you can keep up to date with what's going on through our Facebook page. I'm Shauna Cohn. Good evening.